Hi, now here we have an example on the equilibrium of a particle. And uh, if you haven't done this already, I'll give you a moment just to read the solution. And uh, you can pause the video, come back when ready, and check your work solution against mine. In the meantime, anyway, what we've got here is a particle P of mass 2 kilograms, and it's attached to one end of a light string, and the other end of which is attached to a fixed point here, O. And the particle is held in equilibrium with OP making an angle of 30 degrees to the downward vertical by a force of F newtons. And this force acts in the same vertical plane as the string and acts at an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal. And what we've got to do is find the value of F and the tension in the string. So, how do we go about something like this? Well, the first thing I'd want to do is mark on some forces. And we've already got the force F newtons holding the particle. So what I'm going to do is just overwrite that and just do that in red because I kind of like putting forces in red. We've also got the weight of the particle. We're told that it's got a mass of 2 kilograms. So its weight is going to be mg. It's going to act downwards, m being the mass, which is 2, and then it will be 2g newtons. Now g is the acceleration due to gravity, and I'm going to take it as 9.8 when it comes to working out the solution. We've also got another force supporting P, and that is the tension, which acts in this direction, okay, away from P. So this is going to be, say, T, and that will be T newtons. So these are all the forces then acting on P. There's no reaction. Some people ask me, oh, why haven't I put a reaction in? There's no reaction because this is not resting on a surface, okay? So these are the only forces acting on P. Now, we've got to find the value of F, and this means that we are going to need to consider doing some resolving of forces. Now, normally when I get questions like this, I would want to resolve upwards, and horizontally. But I noticed something about this question which makes it different, and that is that if I was to draw a dotted line up here, okay, let's just put in this angle here. This angle is going to be 30 degrees because these two lines are parallel, and what we've got is alternate angles then, okay. Now, if that's 30 degrees, and I know this is 90 degrees, this angle in here must be 60. And that means that the 60 degrees and the 30 degrees here tells us that this angle in here is 90 degrees. T and F are inclined at 90 degrees to one another. And that means that when it comes to resolving, finding the value of F, it's much easier to resolve in the direction of F because T is perpendicular to that direction and therefore won't enter our equation. It saves us having simultaneous equations with F and T in. So I consider that the best technique here in this question. But if you do decide to resolve upwards and horizontally, then go for it. Go for it and then compare your method with mine. Okay, And you'll be able to then see how one is easier than the other. Okay, well, if that's the way I'm going to do my resolving, what I'm going to do is set up a dotted line then in this direction here, and we'll also have a dotted line along the string. So we'll put one down there, okay? So we need a few angles marked in, and what have we got? Well, we've got this 30 degrees here, so we've got these two lines crossing one another, so this angle here must also be 30 degrees. Now, let's start by resolving. So for part one, okay, if we resolve in the direction of F, taking that direction as positive, okay, going outwards like that, that's the positive sense. 
So what we've got then is all of f acts outwards. Okay, so that's all of f. So that's that force done. As for t, that doesn't enter the equation. Okay, we're using, by the way, sorry, I didn't mention that. When I'm talking about resolving, we're using force equals mass times acceleration. The force being the resultant force acting on the particle. So I'm considering that resultant force, which is f. Now, t doesn't enter the equation because it acts perpendicular to the line of action here that we're taking, okay? But the 2g newtons, the weight of the particle, you can see that it's inclined to this line here. It's not perpendicular. So what we do is we split this into two components. One will be down in this direction and the other will be down in this direction. I'm assuming you're familiar with splitting a force into components. If not, you can see tutorials on my website on splitting a force into components. But the one in this direction we're not interested in because it's perpendicular to this line here. We want this component, which excludes the angle here. And when it excludes the angle, we use the sine of this angle. So this component is 2g sine 30. You could say it's the cosine of 60 degrees. It's the same, OK? But I prefer to just work with the angle we're given. So it excludes this. So it's 2g sine 30. And it acts down in this direction, opposite sense to this. So it's going to be minus 2g sine 30. So I hope you got that, OK? And this is our resultant force. And that resultant force equals the mass times the acceleration. But it's not moving. So there's no resultant force. It's an equilibrium. OK? So we've just got to rearrange this equation now to get f. So therefore, f equals 2g times the sine of 30 degrees. If we take g to be 9.8, then we've therefore got f to be equal to 9.8 exactly. That's how it falls out. OK, so there we go. Now for part two, we've got to get the tension in the string. So for part two, what I want to do now is resolve in a perpendicular sense to this one. Remember, when you're doing resolving questions, you resolve in one direction, and then you generally resolve in the perpendicular direction. And I'm going to take that perpendicular direction as positive as being in this direction, so that it makes t positive in my equation. So we've got all of t acting in that direction. OK, so that's t. As for f, well, f is perpendicular to the direction that we're considering. So f does not enter the equation. But the weight here has to be split into two components. One in that direction and one in that direction. The one in this direction, 2g sine 30, is now perpendicular to the direction that we're resolving. So it doesn't enter the equation. But the component of 2g down in this direction is in the opposite direction to this. So it's going to be negative, And its component is 2g cosine 30, because it includes the angle. OK? So it's minus 2g cosine, or cos, 30 degrees. That's the resultant force acting in this direction, along this line here. And because the particle's not moving, that resultant force is equal to the 0. So we've just got to rearrange this, add 2g cos 30 to both sides. So you get t equals 2g cos 30 degrees. And if you work this out, the exact value, OK, because cosine 30 is root 3 over 2, the 2's cancel, you'll end up with root 3 g. But if you substitute g as 9.8, you get t coming out as 16.97, and so on. And you could give that to a particular desired 
accuracy. So let's say we go for three significant figures. If I do, that's 17.0. 17.0 newtons then to three significant figures. Okay, so I uh, hope it's given you an idea. As I say, resolving forces or splitting them into components can often be a problem. So if you want, as I say, tutorials on this, just go on my website, look under resolving forces or splitting forces in the index, and you should find it will take you to tutorials on this. Okay?